I am Sharon Varghese. I am working as a clinical nurse specialist in COPD outreach. Myself and my colleague May, who is senior respiratory physiotherapist, is here to provide a short video on the management of COPD. Our intention is to make, make COPD education available to all the patients with diagnosis of COPD who is coming to Tala University Hospital. Being informed is an integral part of the management of COPD. Hope you will find it useful and thank you for your attention. COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. It is a common treatable and chronic lung condition characterized by chronic cough, phlegm and shortness of breath. It is a collective term for emphysema and bronchitis and is mainly caused by exposure to harmful particles in inhaled gas, example smoking. A COPD patient had several structural and functional changes in their lungs, such as inflammatory changes, increased muc mucus production, and associated airway narrowing. Also, the alveoli in the distal airways are broken down to form bullae, and as a result, the patient will become more breathless. Risk factors of COPD are smoking, atmospheric or chemical pollution, underlying lung diseases such as asthma and chronic bronchitis, and genetic disorders like alpha antitrypsin deficiency and age over 40 years. An exacerbation or flare-up of COPD is an acute increase in symptoms beyond normal day-to-day -day variation that results in additional therapy such as antibiotics or steroids. This includes a sudden increase in one or more of the cardinal symptoms of COPD which are cough, sputum production and breathlessness. You may notice an increase in frequency and severity of cough, increased sputum production and change in color of the sputum to yellow or green and increased breathlessness. As COPD is a chronic illness, it is very important for you to know how to monitor yourself and act timely if you have any symptoms. It is necessary to avoid any delay in treatment as it might seriously affect your lung function. This is a traffic light system to guide in, in the self-management of COPD. As you can see, the chart is color coded for you to signal what kind of day you are having. Green is a feeling well day, means your symptoms are at baseline. Yellow is a bad day, which means you have more than usual symptoms and your COPD is bothering you. Orange day is a feeling unwell day, means your rescue inhalers and breathing exercises did not relieve your symptoms and you produce more phlegm and your phlegm is changing in color to yellow or green. Red day means none of these things are working for you and you are feeling very breathless and unwell. Let me explain what you are supposed to do in each kind of day. Green day or feeling well day. Take your prescribed medications and inhalers as advised and keep as active as possible. Yellow day or feeling bad day. Take your daily preventer inhaler. Use rescue inhalers such as Ventolin in addition to your preventer inhaler. Use this regularly throughout the day. Orange day or feeling unwell day. Take your daily preventer inhaler. Take your rescue inhaler, example Ventolin or blue inhaler, every 4 to 6 hours in addition to your preventer inhaler. Continue with regular breathing and exercises and chest clearance techniques. If you have chest, uh, frequent chest infections, your doctor might have prescribed rescue antibiotics and steroids for you. If you have that in place, start taking that too. Call your GP or out of a service for advice. Red day or feeling very unwell day. You should contact your GP or out of a services urgently or go to emergency department. Call ambulance in 112 if you are having chest pain, confusion or feeling breathless even at rest. What do you do to prevent exacerbations or flare-up? Quit smoking. Stopping smoking is the biggest favor that you could possibly do to yourself. Smoking cessation advice will be there in detail later in the presentation. Vaccinations. As you have an underlying lung condition, you are prone to many respiratory infections which could become detrimental to your health. Vaccines will make you more immune to those dangerous microorganisms. 
you need to take flu vaccine every year and pneumonia vaccine every five years. You can check with your GP to arrange the same. Good inhaler technique. Practice good inhaler technique religiously every single time when you are taking your inhalers. Because without proper technique, majority of your medicines will not go into your lungs. Take prescribed medications and do not miss your clinical appointments. Avoid crowded places, especially during any outbreak. Avoid exposure to lung irritants such as smoke, sprays, aerosols and fumes. Wash your hands regularly or use hand sanitizers. Drink plenty of water. It will prevent, prevent your phlegm getting sticky which might cause chest infection. Do regular exercises. Exercises and activity, activities will be shown in detail later in the presentation. Eat a balanced meal and get a good night's sleep. Inhalers are the major treatment of your COPD. If you are taking your inhalers with proper technique, they deliver medicine straight into your lungs. Your inhalers are divided into two different categories. First, reliever inhaler or rescue inhaler, which are short-acting inhalers. Second, preventer inhaler, which are long-acting inhalers. Rescue inhalers open up your airways and is used at the time of sudden shortness of breath and when you are having a flare-up. Preventer inhaler are to keep your lung healthy all the time without getting frequent chest infection. It may not have an immediate effect, doesn't mean it's not working for you. You need to take your preventer inhaler every single day whether you are sick or well. You need to keep an eye on the dose counter and make sure you are not running out of stock at any time. Other general rules for inhalers are do not use anyone else's inhaler, pay attention to the expiry date, tell your doctor or healthcare worker if your inhaler, inhaler is changed and how you find the new inhaler in terms of your breathlessness or other symptoms of COPD. Wash your mouth after using your inhaler. Inhaler technique. Please click in the link for the demonstration of detailed inhaler technique and spacer device use. Choose the instruction video of the specific device that you are using and practice these steps strictly every single time when you are using your inhaler. Nebulizer. Nebulizer is an electronically operated machine to deliver inhaled medications in aerosolized form into your lungs. Mostly those medications used into the nebulizers are similar to your rescue inhalers to give you immediate relief from the shortness of breath and can be used at the time of flare-up. These need to be used in an as needed basis and to be slowly weaned off unless otherwise directed by your doctor. Operate nebulizers on a hard surface. Also, you need to make sure to keep nebulizers set as clean as possible. Wash in soap or mild detergent in running water and leave it to air dry. Change the set every 3 to 4 months or earlier if needed. If you have a problem with nebulizer or consumables, you may contact the company in the number provided on the top of the machine. Oxygen. Some people need supplemental oxygen to improve their oxygen level in the blood. You will be assessed by your hospital to see if your oxygen levels are low in the blood. If you are on oxygen, it's important to keep the oxygen at the prescribed amount and time. Also keep in mind that breathlessness is not always due to reduced oxygen level. It has a lot to do with your overall fitness level as well. Also, oxygen safety should be closely monitored. Do not smoke or flame up near the oxygen equipment. You need to inform your family, friends or visitors about the same too. If you are planning to travel with oxygen, you need to contact the oxygen company airline, hospital, travel agent and insurance provided early in advance for necessary assessments and arrangements. If you are using a cylinder with conserver box to move around with oxygen, you need to set up the prescribed amount on the box and set it for on the top of the cylinder. For example, if you are prescribed 2 liters, set 2 at the conserver which is looking like this. So you can turn this one around to set at 2 and you should set 4 on the top of the cylinder all the time. So 
So if you have if you are having a flare up, your doctor might prescribe antibiotic or steroids or both for you. You need to eat a balanced diet to manage your long term illness. This food pyramid shows the amount of each category of food you need to eat in number of servings. As you can see, add plenty of fruits and vegetables which contain antioxidants which fight harmful free radicals and help to maintain your immune system. Also include carbohydrate rich foods such as cereals, bread, potatoes and pasta and rice 3 to 5 cervix per day which provide energy to your body. Milk, yogurt, cheese products that contain calcium which is essential for healthy bones. This is especially important if you are taking steroids as they increase bone loss. Meat, poultry, fish, eggs, beans and nuts contain protein which is important to build and maintain muscle. Use fats, spreads and oils in very small amount. They are high in, high in energy and provide vitamins such as vitamin D which we need to absorb calcium. Confectionery, cakes, crisps, fizzy drinks etc. provide very little nutrition other than sugar, fat and empty calories. So do not take it every day. So there are four positions that I would like to discuss just now that will help you ease your breathing and calm you down. The first one is leaning against a wall with your feet slightly forward. Just relax into the wall, relax your shoulders and allow yourself to breathe slowly in and out. The second position you might do when you're outside walking and if you feel breathless, you could lean forward on a wall of someone's garden or their pillar or indeed in your own counter in your kitchen. Again, just allowing your diaphragm relax and your shoulders to ease off the pressure. The third position Sheeran's going to demonstrate. So if you're sitting, you could lean forward and rest your forearms on your thighs. This will allow your diaphragm to relax and allow your stomach muscles to breathe in and breathe out. The fourth position then is sitting at a table. You could have two pillows resting on the table. Bring them close to you. Lean forward, resting your forearms and your head down on the pillows. And again, nice, relaxed, calm breathing. If you felt you needed to, you could also take your Ventolin Reliever Inhaler at this time. Chest Clearance Techniques Active Cycle of Breathing Technique is a step-by-step -step cyclical process. It starts with breathing control. Normal, quiet breathing allows you to rest and the breathing technique begin. Then you do thoracic expansion exercises, deep breathing exercises. A three-second hold is useful as it allows air to get behind the secretions from the lower to the upper parts of your lungs. You finish it with a huff, a technique used to clear secretions from the airways rather than coughing. You take a medium breath in, hold the breath, and then forcefully breathe out through an open mouth as if you were fogging up a mirror. You may hear a rattle with your phlegm, and this is fine. Try to cough and clear it. You can repeat this cycle two to three times until you have cleared the phlegm into a tissue or the rattle has resolved. You can now see a video on how to complete this cycle on the website. It is good practice to do these exercises daily. You may need to complete them more frequently every one to two hours if you are suffering from an exacerbation. You should stop if you feel dizzy or if your chest feels tight or more wheezy. Exercise is key to reducing and managing symptoms of COPD. Regular exercise can reduce breathlessness, reduce hospital stay and lower rates of infection. If you have a lung condition, being active can help to improve your quality of life and help you manage your condition. I would like to talk about the positive cycle of activity. As you start your journey into exercise, movement and, act and activity, aerobic exercises such as brisk walking, gardening, dancing or general working your heart and your lungs will help everything. To ensure you are working at the right level for you, it is useful to use the Borg Breathless Scale, which I will show you. As we know, breathlessness is a common symptom of COPD and is also common when exercising. Looking at the Borg Breathless Scale, you should aim to exercise at a Borg of three to four, 
So prepare to become moderately to somewhat severely out of breath as your body warms up and your heart beats faster. If you're not very active at the moment, this might seem overwhelming, but think about how you can do a little every day. So try to sit less, break up long periods of sitting and increase the number of steps you take on a day-to-day -day basis. Every week, try to do a total of at least 150 minutes of general exercises or activities. Aim to do activities that improve your muscle strength at least twice a week. For example, carrying heavy shopping bags or lifting weights as I am doing. If you are an older person or at risk of falling, you could include some of these activities to improve your coordination and balance at least twice a week. Talk to your doctor or your physiotherapist about pulmonary rehabilitation, an eight-week exercise programme we offer here at Tally University Hospital, where you will learn exercises to help you self-manage your lung condition and build on your fitness. In Ireland, smoking is the leading cause of avoidable death. Every cigarette you smoke takes five and a half minutes off your life. Once you are prepared or ready to quit, the best steps to do are write down the reasons you like smoking and the reasons you don't. Consider what your concerns are about quitting. Plan to quit by starting a smoking diary and identify where and when you are most likely to smoke. This will help manage these situations without smoking. The HSC website www.quit.ie has links to the health benefits of quitting, how to cope with cravings and withdrawals, and prescription treatments or nicotine replacement therapy that can help you quit. Nicotine replacement therapy doubles your chances of quitting smoking. The next step is to pick a date, get encouragement and support, and take one day at a time. Energy conservation. Everyday tasks and activities require energy. Energy conservation looks at ways to change the way we do activities so you can manage the amount of energy required. Prioritize, do, delay, ditch and delegate. Pace yourself, alternate light and heavy activities. Take regular breaks and use breathing strategies. Position yourself so that you are more comfortable doing everyday activities. For example, sitting while having a shower as opposed to standing. Plan your schedule around when help is available, when your energy levels are low or high, and spread the tasks over and across the day.